So we had uh, IFA 2008 with Jaish, yep. uh, the creator of Divix. So can you just uh, tell us a little bit how, how did it started like in 1999, right? Yes, Divix started in 1999. I was working in a video production environment as a freelance uh, editor doing special effects. And I had the need at the time to uh, be able to share some of my work and in progress work with customers and clients and to be able to have a portfolio. So I kind of modified the codec from Microsoft and, and share it with a couple of friends online. And that's, that's how Divix really, really started. Then you have the, the viral effect on the internet. And from two guys, it goes to 10, 2,000. And pretty quickly to, to millions. So that's the, that's the genesis of DivX. So before that, people were watching crappy videos and real video and stuff like... Uh... Well, that was the time where a video on the internet was a time uh, a stamp size uh, reel uh, that yeah. was really looking like nothing. So really DivX at the time provided a huge quantum leap in terms of video quality. And so from one day to another, then full, uh, full resolution, yeah. full frame rate video was becoming possible. Uh, uh, then after, during the year 2000, we, we incorporated DivX, uh, DivX the, the company, in order to take this into a real product, consumer electronic, and really to move DivX to the next step, the way you, you know it today, where we are present, we have software, we have partnership with uh, uh, hardware uh, manufacturer, we can find DVD players, set top box, portable media player, it's in a PlayStation 3. So, uh, so now DivX is, uh, is everywhere, it's a very uh, uh, widespread uh, video format and technology. And it's a brand? You see that on players, like uh, how many? Uh, 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 we ship more than 100 million uh, certified DVD players and other uh, product category. So yes, DVX nowadays is a, is a, is a pure, uh, I mean, not a pure, but it's a very strong uh, consumer electronic brand. And you'll find that again from cell phone to DVD player to portable media player to digital shield camera. And uh, you even uh, find that also on software side, where a lot of uh, video encoding software, video pro processing software will support DVX natively out of the box. So uh, thanks to your work now, you make sure that videos work on all these devices, like that you have this certification, say? Exactly. So this is the, the purpose of the DVX certification. So when you see a DVX logo on a, on a device, uh, we make sure that it's going to work. We have personally tested that device. Every device, uh, not every single, but every uh, uh, SKU that get, that get out is being tested for compatibility with a, var a large uh, variation of encoding, parameters, file size, resolution, bitrate, etc. Yeah. So the DivX certification doesn't only include the DivX codec, right? It includes a lot of stuff. Uh, DivX certification uh, is based on making sure that you have great experience when you have DivX file, which means testing for uh, uh, video quality, audio, audio sync, and uh, make sure that it does support a large variation of parameters uh, for the encoding parameters. But I mean, it, it also includes, like, for example, MPEG-1 uh, and other stuff. Right? Um, no, no. For MPEG DivX certification, we'll be uh, uh, we'll be looking at uh, DivX codec with MP3 uh, audio yeah. or AC audio. That's basically. The, the boundaries of the certification. We are not going okay. to test MPEG-1 and MPEG-2. And when there's a DVX certification, it means that XVID is part of it as well, of course. Yes, I mean, uh, uh, XVID, DVX, this is uh, like a mirror image. This is the same, uh, uh, based on the same code. Historically, we start developing DVX as an open source project. And at some point, uh, being a company, we have need for monetizing that. Uh, so we move into a, pay, uh, a paid model, and that's where the Xbit guy took our code and, and keep uh, 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 carrying the torch, the open source yeah. torch. So then from the, from that source code, for the source tree, you have two branches. You have the DivX branch and the Xbit branch. And we worked with the Xbit guy uh, very closely uh, across the years to make sure that it is interoperable and that the, the, the files that can be encoded by DivX or Xbit can be played back by Xbit or DivX. So, so it's the very default setting is always going to try, you try and make sure that it's going to work. Like exactly. Open source. Exactly. So even uh, XV do support uh, the DivX profile. So it's very easy to encode a file that will be playback in consumer electronic device. And now most of the files that you find out there, thanks to this certification process, they all will work. They all, they, they all work, exactly. There will be a very little question to be a very little... Uh, yeah. Only when people, like, they don't know what they're doing and they click all the buttons and they don't... So if you, use, if, you use, if you use a DivX, it's very hard to, uh, to, to mess up. Uh, uh, in, a, in a free version of the codec, for instance, uh, the only setting is a slider that will move the quality performance bar from super fast, relatively low quality, 
to slower and very high quality. So and every file, uh, every setting in between will be indeed compatible with our consumer electronic uh, profiles. All right, so now you're also moving into HD, into uh, DivX7, into the box, Xbox, PlayStation, and the other things. What's going on? So, uh, one of the very strong uh, uh, RF development for DivX since, uh, since a long time is to expand what we call the ecosystem. The ecosystem is all the, uh, the places you can create, consume uh, video. So uh, we have the codec, we have partnership with a software company to carry the, uh, to carry the DivX encoder in their product, but also a lot of uh, 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 consumer electronic device. So again, DVD player, set-top box, uh, portable media player, gaming console, digital phone, mobile phone, uh, and I'm pretty sure I forget a couple, DMAs. So uh, all those products do support the DivX technology and uh, are all interoperable with each other. And that's really what DivX, the company, brings to the table, is that make sure that as a user, when you encode a DivX file, you can really enjoy it in every uh, aspect of your life. And uh, some people uh, might say in the forums that H.264 is important, but now DivX is also doing that, right? Yes, I mean, it's a... It's a, it's a uh, uh, yeah, we are moving to H.264 with yeah. DivX 7 that will be based on H.264 uh, technology with an MKV file format. And uh, it's a matter of market readiness. For us, what's important is to be able to provide this functionality into the living room, into uh, people's lifestyle, not only on the computer. And at a price that people can afford, uh, today a DVX uh, certified DVD player is not more expensive than a non-certified DVD player. Uh, and that's very important to be able to reach the price point that consumer can afford. And that's just happening these days, where the chips that can support those kind of video technology are the price that people can actually afford. If you were trying to buy a Blu-ray player last year, it was a month's salary. It was kind of ridiculous. So now it's getting to a point where it is affordable. So it's a good time for us to move into that, uh, uh, that next generation. So DivX7 will be based again on a physics 4 technology with an MKV file format. And so we're very excited about that. Yeah. So our partnership with uh, Main Concept really allow us to get access to the top quality uh, physics 4 encoder, widely regarded by the industry and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, academics uh, uh, to be like the best in, uh, in the industry. So we're very happy about that. So uh, the MKV container is the one to use because API is a little bit of 4 gigabytes, is that something you can use for? A lot of problems with API is, I mean, it's a very old technology, yeah. and it's based on a reef file format that existed since the Amiga days. So it's, yeah. really, it's really stretchy. Um, and th there, is some, uh, there is some technical difficulties that will make it completely impossible to use with uh, H.264. For instance, multiple reference frame, uh, very long uh, gob size, or multiple B-frames. Those, uh, those are really impossible to do in AVI file format. So rather than trying to, uh, 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 I can I say, to, to put a round peg in a, in a square hole, we decide to go and to do a clean start, and MKV seems to be the best solution, because MKV is very flexible, very lightweight, very easy to use, very easy to extend upon, yet already uh, 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 widely adopted by the community. So it, MKV seems like a no-brainer to us. So did you announce DivX7? I mean, what is that? DivX7 has not been, uh, is not officially out yet. Right now we have a beta on DivX Labs, uh, DivXLabs.com, where you can find a beta version of the DirectShow uh, decoder, which is the fastest uh, decoder in the world right now, really uh, beating uh, uh, QuickTime and, uh, and other like, uh, like there is no tomorrow. And we have also uh, a beta version of the encoder that we just released uh, last week, is right now just a command line encoder, but we will uh, evolve, uh, evolve it in upcoming uh, weeks and months uh, in our path to, uh, toward DivX7. So it's so closed beta right now, but we'll open the beta as we move uh, forward. Then you just put the file in and it comes out MKV with DivX7? Um, that, that will be the use case, uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, does that mean that you might have HD camcorders recording in DivX7 or...? Uh, hopefully, yes. It's possible. Yeah, it's absolutely yeah. possible. Uh, we need to find. Uh, I mean, we need to have access to chips that can uh, that can do that at a relatively high uh, uh, quality uh, quality uh, quality ratio. But clearly, that's the direction that uh, this is going. Yes. So, did you say that your decoder is better than all the other ones? That means a slow computer can can play back HD videos and H.264 better with yours. Exactly. So this is very important because everyone 
decodes. Very few people encode, but everyone decode. And if you want to really bring uh, a value uh, to the table, really decoding speed and decoding efficiency is really important. I mean, today everyone has experienced huge slowdown, for instance, when you, look, when you watch uh, uh, F64 video in flash where the whole browser, the whole computer uh, go to a halt because it's extremely heavy on the CPU. Uh, our, our decoder is much better uh, architecture, it's much more efficient, so we can extract more uh, frames per second uh, uh, out of the uh, same CPU, or you can have uh, a very good experience on a lower CPU. So, for example, on a netbook, you can install DivX7 and it will play all the HD files. I don't maybe. Remember, maybe, I don't know how fast is yeah. the netbook, but uh, uh, there may be uh, uh, basically the use of the GVX directional filter really reduce the uh, the minimum the minimum requirement yeah. for a f uh, 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 full motion playback and HD playback. Yes. All right. So GVX connected. What's going on with that? GVX connected is a is a platform, a set of technology that uh, that we develop that allows to bridge the gap between the PC the content on the PC, the content on the internet, and the television. Again, uh, high quality video wants to be experienced in the living room. That's why people have big screen TV, that's why people have uh, 4.1 audio, that's why people want to see the content. And today it's a bit of a challenge. Uh, even with DVD certified DVD player, you still have to burn a DVD to physically walk it to your living room. DVX connected, uh, today the first product on the market is the D-Link DSM330. Uh, but tomorrow, the idea is to take this set of technology and put it into a device category that have network connection, like Blu-ray uh, player, like uh, gaming console, but also directly and ultimately inside the television themselves. It's a very thin stack; doesn't cost a lot of money to add, uh, and it's a very uh, and it's uh, and it allowed and, uh, to bring your internet content and your local content into your your television. And it's also it's an open platform. We have an uh, available SDK that you can download from free from DivX Labs, where uh, web developers can uh, bring their own services, their own plugin, their own functionality to the to the to the box. So it's you very uh, remote like this. Yes, and it's all uh, driven with a normal remote, so no need for a keyboard, no need for a clunky yeah. Microsoft like you know keyboard and uh, and mouse yeah. in your couch. So with this remote, you can actually go on Google Maps and. Um, we can do a lot of things. Yeah. So there it's, I mean, we don't need to do exactly right now, sure, but... Yeah, that's uh, really a bit, thank you. Do you have anything to announce about the new, what did you announce here at IFA? Like here at IFA, we announced a couple of things. We announced our first set-top box for the European market, made by uh, Vestel. So, uh, uh, so set-top box, so you can do like side-loading, basically put a USB key in there. We announced... Uh, we announced, sorry, I did, I did my... Uh, 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 a 720p uh, red laser DVD by LG, so relatively low cost, very high, uh, very nice design uh, that can do HD out of uh, out of a normal DVD. Uh, a, a GVC that launched their first uh, Blu-ray player that does support uh, uh, DVX, and uh, and working with our friend from Main Concept uh, to uh, to support DVX in their professional encoding application called Reference. Uh, so DVX support in a professional uh, encoding application is very important for us because it enables our partner from the content creation side to really automize uh, DVX encoding using a workflow that they already uh, use and they are already familiar with. And concept reference application is used for broadcast, for uh, Blu-ray authoring and stuff like this. So uh, a lot of people in Hollywood actually are using this application. So being in, in there is very important for us. And is it based on Linux or? Uh, they have Mac and PC version. Uh, yeah. of, the, of this application, yes. All right. You're not using Linux to encode the... We do have server-side encoding stuff for some of our partners. This is not a public, uh, this is not a public product, but we do have uh, some Linux codec and, uh, and, uh, and things like this. But usually the Linux crowd uh, find, uh, find their way uh, uh, and can play back and encode without any... Because Toshiba, they just released this thing that in gadget, uh, people in the comments, they say, what are they doing, Toshiba, you know? Because they use this HD DVD Blu-ray thing. And not at least the DVD player is upscaling DVX support, but the DVX support is not HD. That's too bad. I mean, it'd be really nice. So that would depend. That would depend. That will depend on the chip they use in the box, and uh, most of the upscaling DVD player is just normal.